Hello and welcome to the final episode of the Flag to Flag Motorsport Podcast for 2017. On today's episode, we're going to be looking back at the 2017 season of the Australian Supercars, the way the championship unfolded as well as looking forward to the 2018 season. Joining me today are my co-hosts, Ryan and Willie. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. How are we? So it's probably time to move on to the... 2017 Virgin Australia Supercars Championship results and uh, it finished with quite a bang actually, a very entertaining way to, to end the season a close way, some disappointment, some tears uh, but nonetheless we do have a result and Jamie Winkup has grabbed yet another championship Yeah, it's not how I envisioned the season to, to end uh, with sad day's race it was, uh, what was it Winkup coming in with a 30 point lead and then for the turnaround on Sunday um, well, I suppose it all started with Wing Cup's DNF. Yeah, on the Saturday, um, and it looked like not, yes. non, he, he finished Sorry, the race. No, not, not DNF, but but yeah, we're 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 yeah, down. Three yeah, three laps down or whatever he was. Yeah, so um, no, it was it was one of those things that looked like Scotty Mack actually pretty much sealed the title on on Saturday because all he had to do was yeah. come eleventh. Uh, or better right. on the Sunday, and uh, yeah. and he was going to win the championship. It didn't matter where where Wink Up finished, uh, but you know, presuming Wink Up won, he only had to come eleventh. So it looked like Scotty Mack had it in the bag. Yeah, no, it certainly didn't go to plan. He started on pole, and his first few laps, everything looked pretty dominant, really. But with a uh, drive through for speeding in pit lane, uh, turning Simona around, uh, the fifteen second penalty there. Uh, there was contact. At the start, restart after a safety car. Um, when there was a bit of a pile up in front, Scotty Pye ended up flying down the inside, and Jason Bright clouded him. And that's when there was the tyre rubbing, and I thought that might have been over and out for him, but then that cleared. Um, so it still kept it interesting. Look, let's let's um, be honest. Scott yeah. McLaughlin did everything he could on Sunday to lose. Like <laughs> he oh, really yeah. did, and, and not just him, but the way everything fell as well. Obviously, there was a pit lane penalty, um, and you know, there's. A, conjecture around on social media about if that was legit or not and that was started by the friggin commentators talking about how oh it was only the two djr team penske like it's it, it's a it's a penalty based on fact you can't have your own facts obviously the uh oh. the the equipment that the supercars have to read um you know the pit lane speed they got pinged on it. No one else did, so it wasn't like it was faulty equipment on their behalf. And people saying... Dale, oh, Dale but... Wood also got a penalty. Oh, that. Yeah, he yeah, did so earlier on. Three. Yeah. But three out of the whole field doesn't mean they had faulty yeah, yeah. equipment. Like that, It's just one of those things. No. So it sucks for Scott, sucks for uh, Fabian, and it sucks for Team Penske, but it's also not Supercar's fault. There's no conspiracy there. There was no faulty equipment. It just... It is what it was. And the people saying that Gisbergen... Like, how can Scott have possibly been speeding when Shane caught up. Well, the answer that yeah. I would have thought, especially to people like like Scaife, who was commentating at the time, I thought the obvious thing was he caught up under brakes. Scott McLaughlin obviously didn't go into the pit lane so hard. They don't measure how fast you're going in the pit lane before you cross the line. The only thing that matters is how fast you're going once you go over the line. And Shane didn't catch up in the pit lane once he crossed the line he caught up under brakes in the lead into it he was obviously more committed braked a lot later braked a lot harder I, I don't understand how there's conjecture around yeah. you know how could he not have but been speeding well because he just well, he can, caught up under brakes yeah and you, the second car's always hidden to the radar so that that's part of the gamesmanship too oh, the, the second car to can a make degree, up just but that if little you sort bit. of watch the replay because Scott was there and he'd had to slow down Gears had to slow down to the right speed before he even got to the line. He, he in a way, yes. he was sort of penalised because he couldn't hit that line and get and, and get to forty kilometres an hour as he crossed the line. Uh, is it forty or forty-five? 40. forty. Forty. Yeah, he couldn't get to the line at forty because Scott had half his car hanging over the back of the line, so he was actually doing forty kilometres an hour before he got to the line. Scott might have been sure. Okay, he was much slower and. Yeah, in the braking markers, in the braking area leading up to that, that's where Shane caught up, but that doesn't mean Scott wasn't doing 44 when he crossed the line. Um, mm, I, yeah. just, there's, I, I just don't see how there can be an argument on that. I think people just need to, to drop that section of it. It is what it is. He was caught speeding in pit lane by equipment that is there to read every car that comes through, and it is what it is. Now, that, that didn't ruin his championship, though. 
as bad as that was, that sucked for him and it put him back in the pack and whatever else. But that didn't ruin the race. I think one of, and we touched on this just before we started the podcast, I think one of the key incidences that, that cost him the championship was him spinning Simone de Silvestre. Yes. Yeah. It's a move that didn't need to happen. I mean, Correct. if you look at where he wa- if you look at where he was in the race, he was already. I think if he wasn't in the eleven, he wasn't far off it. Uh, he would have jumped a couple of people in the next pit stop. All he needed to do was maintain. That was it, and he'd won the championship. Yep, it was. Um, um, like obviously, he he hasn't won a championship before, so he's not going back to all of his years of experience of winning championships to know the right thing to do, but. I just think he was maybe, I don't know if he was maybe panicking a bit, if the nerves are starting to kick in because he was so much further back and he just felt like he had to get through. Um, yeah. do want to quickly give a mention to Simona de Silvestre. On paper, she had a terrible weekend. She was horrible. You'd look at look at her oh, results yeah. and go, rubbish, no worries. But if you watch the race, she was... One of the, one of the best overtakers in there. She, well, she, she was, was a standout. At a track where, and we'll talk about the track in a second, but at a track where overtaking unfortunately is not much of a thing it's very very difficult to do on that track she was probably the shining light out of every car out there she was the shining light that actually overtook people and in the highlights package they showed her with about four or five consecutive cars shooting down in between turn whatever numbers they were um i think it was eight yeah and but she was the shining light and she actually went really well on saturday she was having a cracking time on for fifth by far not only just the best result for her and that's that's good for her from a personal level but it's actually just outright for the series that that's a good result anyone that's coming fifth you, you've had a good day at the office uh whether it's yeah. a pb or, or whatever it's it's just a good day at the office unfortunately that didn't didn't go so well for her on saturday um feel for her there but not too much because it was her mistake but on Sunday, she didn't qualify well. She needs to work on that for next year. Um, if, you, if you don't qualify, I don't even know where she qualified, but it was back. Uh, it was a lot further back yep. than she should have been. Had she have qualified well, I genuinely think she'd have had a really good result because her speed in the race was good. Her race pace was good. Race craft was good. The overtaking was good. And she got caught up in a few bad things, unfortunately. And the, But the thing that sealed the fate, obviously, was Scott McLaughlin, that incident. So just a quick shout-out to her. She actually had a bloody good weekend, but the, the score sheet won't show that. It'll show that she had a no. terrible one. Well, <laughs> not so much a terrible one, more a typical one for the rest of her year. Yeah, that's a reflection. But the other interesting thing was that's the first level playing field. It's the first track no one had been to. So... Yep. It wasn't a case of her learning the track when everyone else has been there. It was quite legitimately, everyone was on the same level playing field. The Nissan did look pretty good, to be fair, because Caruso was also fast. The The Kelly brothers were, were fast, er, than usual. Um, but even the, it, yeah, the Nissan did look good, but nonetheless, she, she actually went pretty well. And it's, it's got to give you hope, if you're Nissan, that you've actually, you've got a good driver on your hands that just probably needs some mm. experience. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think it was uh, it was really good and probably confidence inspiring for her too that she can go out there and not feel like she's on the back foot. Uh, she had really good command of the car a lot of the time. So whether something like that circuit uh, really goes with her driving style, but those passes she was making and just the way she was entering those couple of turns, she was turning in early. Uh, looked like the car had plenty of grip. They've obviously done a good job at setting it up and her understanding with the engineer, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It was obviously pointy because uh, the front did exactly what she asked it to do. That that's right, and so I think that's really encouraging uh, to move forward for her for next year. Confidence, so she can go to the Clipsville 500 next year and have confidence she's been there before. Well, it's uh, a similar a style track, and you know she's proved that she can go around yeah. the street circuit. So it, it's probably even though the results are bad. Hopefully she can carry some confidence into next year and we can actually see her start to go okay. And it's easy to say the Nissan was good and it did look very pointy, but the no, none of the other Nissans were overtaking in that same spot. It's not like, you know, no. Rick Kelly and, and Caruso were also overtaking everyone in that same spot. She was yep. more hooked up there than I think just about anyone else for the whole race. Yeah, well, she yeah, was handling I, Todd. Uh, I can't think what stage of the race that was, but he, she was all over him, so I'm not really sure... Uh, we didn't end up seeing a pass, I don't think, between those two, but she was a lot quicker. Oh, no doubt. Yeah, 100%. Um, no, it was, a, it was a good thing for, for Simona, but um, anyway, sidetracked enough there. Unfortunately for Scott McLaughlin, he ruined her race, and also, I think at that point, 
that's when the pressure would have gone on. Still didn't lose him the championship. Obviously, the final incident with, with Lowndes ruined the... Ruined, actually, officially ended it. Um, but that that was that was not good. And uh, obviously, moving on to the third and final incident, unfortunately, he got turn one wrong. He went in way too deep. The back started to come around on him, whether that was tyre wear. That, it was probably nerves. I'd imagine his heart was thumping, and he would feel it in his neck at that point because it was the last lap of the race, last lap of the whole championship. And all he had to do was come in the position he just earned, and he was going to win the championship, his first championship. That, that's right. And it's, how crazy is it as well that the whole year, if he finished in that position, he and Jamie Winkup were tied on points. That's it. I mean, it was uh, how good is that? We're just talking about Formula One and, and how the season itself was kind of a dud, unfortunately. And then you go over to something like the supercars, and the entire season was determined on the last lap of the last race. Yeah. I mean, that, that's right. That ain't bad going, is it? No, like they always say, um, and it happens quite often too, they say, you can't write a script for this. You couldn't write it in this way or this good. And it was it was crazy. So if, if you're on a Scott McLaughlin uh, train, it was everything that he had thrown at him, he could, he almost overcome it. Um, and Jamie Winkup, all he had to do was, uh, once he got to the lead, was just maintain it. So he couldn't do any more. So all the action was happen- happening down throughout the field. And it was a little bit nerve-wracking to watch at times. Uh, but yeah, but then that could have been all over too because Fabian's car had a drivetrain issue, which we haven't seen really with the Penske cars. They haven't really had any issues at all throughout the season. No, they have very strong very season. Cars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so like, that could have been Scott McLaughlin and that could have been all over from early on in the race. So it's quite lucky that it wasn't. It is. Um, and it, it put on probably um, not so much racing one-on-one, but as a, a story for the race to unfold, it was probably the most exciting race of the season. It was, it's got to be well, one that's of it. the most I mean, exciting season ended. If, yeah. <laughs> if Scotty hadn't got those penalties and be back in the field and fighting for that 11th spot, um, if he was up the front and him and Winkup were going for the win, well, it wouldn't have been very exciting because, well... Scotty's won, so it's yeah. like, yeah. You really can't write a story that good. Like, he only had to come 11th. Well, he overtook he got there. from 12th to 11th on the second last lap, which I think, was it? Is it the last corner? Very nearly the end of the lap. On the second last yeah, lap, yeah. that's when he finally got back to 11th. Like, you, you really can't script it that well. It, it's it's almost like it's rigged it so, it's so well scripted. But, yeah, unfortunately, obviously, he cocked up turn one. There's no getting around that. He's got to own that. In fact, he's got to own everything that, that pretty much happened. He's got to own turning Simona around, speeding in the pit lane. That wasn't the team's fault. Um, and then the final incident. Now, we haven't really been touching on the incident where people lie on that. But just quickly, personally, I think that's... I, and, and just to, to get this out there, I was on the Scott McLaughlin train. Wanted to see him win his first championship. Absolutely. Stand by that. Very disappointed for the guy, but unfortunately he did the wrong thing. Um, he moved over on, on Lowndes. He ruined Lowndes' race. Lowndes is racing because he's a racer, and that's what racing drivers do. They try and overtake the guy in front of them. Plus, it was going to win the championship for his teammate, so of course he was trying to overtake. Um, no blame there, and I know McLaughlin came out and said, look, I, I lost my mirror, so I didn't know exactly where he was. That's fine, I understand that, but I don't think there's anything in the rules that say you can't move over on someone and push them off the track, whether it's into a wall or just off the track. Uh, but if you don't have a mirror, then that's that's fine, we understand. So, <laughs> that that rule doesn't exist. He moved over, he paid the penalty, and unfortunately, it cost him a championship. So, that's where I sit on the whole incident anyway. Yeah. Yeah, it was unfortunate. It, he, he ran wide, which then opened it up for Lance to pass. And of course, Lance was going to pass. Like people right. say, he he was he was there to ruin Scott's race. That is that is not true. He was a part of the team that was going to win the championship. And if he didn't pass, Scott won. That's it. But why wouldn't he try and overtake anyway? Like you, it, you don't hold back because someone's in the championship race and go, well, I won't overtake that guy from another team because he's in the championship hunt and I'm not. He's a racer. Craig's going to overtake. If you see a gap and you no longer go for it, Senna said this: you're no longer a racing car driver. He opened up the gap. Yep. He got a bad run. What he should have done was he just did. let Lowndes come through um, and tried to overtake him around the rest of the lap. He just proved to himself that he could do it uh, by when, when he overtook for, for 11th. So that was the right thing to do. He squeezed Lowndes against the wall. He paid the penalty. It is what it is. I don't think 
you know. And, and yeah, it, it's it's a volatile topic that I know we don't want to touch too much on because, you know, everyone's drawn a line. Social media is going crazy over it. Um, but nonetheless, I think the Stewarts ultimately got it right. That's the race. That's how it's ended. It sucks for Scott Mc, Scott McLaughlin. It sucks for his fans. It sucks for me because I wanted to see him win. But it is what see, it is. See, for me, th- that's why I don't like to put so much emphasis on that moment in the race because whilst it may or may not have been the moment that cost him the race um, I was on team J-Dub I wanted him to win it because I think that he deserved it um, Scotty McLaughlin has had a fantastic year like fantastic unreal like 15 poles or something 7 wins um, you know, it was a great year for Scotty McLaughlin and whilst even looking at that I still don't think that he deserved the championship in a sense I don't think he sort of earned it. You know, J-Dub didn't get one day DNF the whole year. He didn't get anywhere near as many wins, but that's fine. Rick Kelly won the 2006 with no wins. Yeah. Um, but he was there or thereabouts. He was able to maximise. Um, if you look at the start of Scotty McLaughlin's year... He had a lot of bad results, and it wasn't because Scotty McLaughlin's a bad r- driver. He's getting used to a new team, a new car, a new engineer, everything. Yeah, 100%. You know? yeah. So if, if you look at the points that he lost at the start of the year, just on that base alone, he would have won the championship before the, ra- the last round. Yeah. Ultimately, I think experience uh, and wisdom and, well, yeah, just experience won Jamie Wink up the championship. Um and as you say, you don't want to pin the whole thing down to Scott McLaughlin's one final incident with Craig Lowndes. Sure, that was technically the thing that ended the season. But as you say, better results at the start of the year. And if he hadn't have sped in the pit lane, if he put, hadn't have turned some put it this around, way, though, he wouldn't have been worrying about it. Um, I think I saw a stat the other day where he got his 15 pole positions this year, 16 races where he started from the front row. Oh, the boy can Own- qualify. Let's no, yeah. no mistake about that. Here's, here's this for a conversion. Three times he led into turn one. Yeah, wow. So he needs to work on his starts. Right. So, you know, the, that's what I'm saying. Like, he's odds on, like, I would put money on him. He's going to win the championship next year. Absolutely. Um, he's going to win many but championships, this, yep. But this year was just not his year. It wasn't. He, he, he had a great year. Like, if you look at it all, he's done a fantastic job, everything considered. But it just wasn't his year. And for everyone to say that, oh, it's all rigged and, you know, all that. Jamie Winkup had a much better year and it's due to consistency, yep. same team, same skill, knowledge, a level head, getting it done when it needed to be done. You know, like, and that's, that's what I think won in the championship. And that's what they say, you know. They talk about, oh, Bathurst is the race that you win on the day sort of thing, but the championship you've got to win the whole year. like, And you don't win it on the last race. Yeah. Oh, look, I, I completely agree. And as I say, I, I know I sat on the other side of the fence to you two boys going into the last round because I was wanting Scotty Mack to get his first win, but I completely agree with everything you just said. Um, and it was his first year. He's going to go on to win many, many more. But the reality oh, is yeah. when you look at the season as a whole, as an aggregate, he... No, he wasn't as good. Wing Cup just went about his business, got it done, won the championship, and you know you can't begrudge him for that. He did the right thing, and yeah. he came out on top. So exactly, it is what it is. I'm certainly not going to disagree with you. I 100% agree with you, and uh, it's a good learning curve for for Scott McLaughlin. Obviously, he's going to be very disappointed, and I do feel sorry for the guy. But um, it is what it is. He'll take it away, and with some experience coming into. A second year with a well-established team, I think he's going to go just fine next year. And as I said, the boy can qualify. If he can get off the line and lead mm. into Turn 1, it's going to change his season just by doing that. Oh, I think well, next it. year's going to be very exciting. Because uh, Giz had a little bit of bad luck towards the end. And he did. Hopefully look Shane's back in it. Because Shane's who I actually want to win the championship, just to put that back yeah. out there. <laughs> you, like, you look how he started the season. And he dominated Clipsal. And I, I'm pretty sure he will come in... Uh, next year, all guns blazing, so to speak, and yeah, I, I, Wing Cup's going to do the same thing as he always does, and just be the good. Big, cause that's, the big unknown <laughs> that you'll get is. there, though, is um, Triple Eight with their new car. Yeah, that is a big um, unknown. You're dead right there. Well, it's going to be a lot of the teams too, because uh, yeah. I think a few of the but, other teams are, are taking that on. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, I know. I know that. I but like, downside. 
it's, it's just, it's, I'm not saying it's a downside because obviously you're not going to spend millions of dollars creating a slower car, um, but it's just an unknown. Well, just, to be honest, that... and this is yeah, coming from a guy who's only followed supercars for the last couple of years, I'm going to allow you guys to answer this question for me. They're, they're not bringing the new engine in next year, right? No, Same engines no. this year. Yeah. Yep. The, the chassis is a homologated chassis. It's oh, not one yeah, they get exactly to change. Right. So other than the look of the panels they're bolting to the car... There is an aero change. There it's, is an aero it, the change. Aero, the aero change had to be homologated and has passed. So there is an aero change to the car. So the way that it okay. will deal with the aero effect will be different. Okay. Um, okay. So there is going to be some difference because I was just thinking, you know, yeah. same engine, same chassis. Really, how much difference is there going to be? But I suppose you could say that for all of them because they're all sort of running similar sorts of things. Um, engines yeah. change, obviously, between the Ford and the Nissan. Um, you've got the engine. So that's a big point of difference. But, uh, yeah, I suppose it's the difference between everything. So, no. It yeah, I, I don't think they'll be in any strife like they went from oh, Ford no, to Holden I... years ago and it didn't look it looked like they made an advantage if anything yeah and that's, and, going and to that's a, the thing like I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that they're going to be at a disadvantage but yeah it's just a slight unknown whereas you know we're talking about the consistency factor of you know triple eight going from year to year and Jamie yeah. Winkup coming out guns blazing something you know DJR Team Penske is going to be going into next year with basically exactly the same package that they've got. They know that they've got a successful package. So that's going to breed confidence. You know, if anything happens, you know, I can't see Triple Eight, you know, dropping their head and be like, oh, what's going to happen? Um, because I think it'll be fine. But yeah, at the moment, I don't, we, we'll save that for the start of next year anyway. We don't want to talk about next year too much. Yeah. Um, well, hopefully Penske don't take a down slide like. Uh, uh, PRA did a few years ago. They dominated, absolutely dominated, like they're in a different, a different car, yep. and then shit the bed. Yeah, yep. but that was a, that was a tire change though. Yeah, there was yeah. yeah that rule change, which which probably didn't help them as well. I can't see Penske going downhill a great deal between uh, I, uh, previous I week so. and, was, and next year. I'll be interested to see what happens in the next couple of years on what sort of driver lineup they look at because unless like I know Fabs was right up there, but they have been given good cars this year, so I'm not trying to take anything away from him. But Fabian is not the same level as Scott McLaughlin. He's not. I agree with that. And I think so, I think Fab's got another year or, or so with him, and I think they're pretty quickly going to be starting to look for their next Scott McLaughlin slash yeah. Shane Van Gisbergen slash whoever they, the next best is to come in. They're going to have to because you, well, you look at Scott's previous record with all his teammates... He has just dominated their performances. So, I don't know, it'd be interesting to see. Scotty may be in quite a league of his own. That's it. Mm. And look, speaking of driver lineups, obviously we saw the uh, last race, uh, at least for now, for quite a few of the people out there on the grid. Obviously, Todd Kelly retiring. It was probably about time, let's be honest. He's not had yep. a great year. Um, he's obviously got a lot on his plate running. The, the team. Probably could have done it about three years ago. I think he probably could have done, uh, and I think it's it's good that it opens up another seat. I suppose we have. Yeah. Got a, have we got a confirmation as to who's going in that no. seat? No. Okay. No. So we'll no, I with... wouldn't be surprised if it's Jack LeBrock. I reckon that's that's where my money is. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with that. I think that's surely that's where it's heading. Yeah, there's there's a few things up with Jack LeBrock at the moment. Um, I, Although... I can see I can see him being on a, on the track full time next year. I just. I don't think it's certain it's going to be in the Nissan. Okay. Actually, it may not be because I saw a thing that said Heimgardner was linked to Nissan. Yeah, so there's a few things that are up in the air at the moment. Apparently, they've already signed a contract, but they're not going to announce it just yet. Um, on the other hand, last week, uh, last weekend of uh, last season of racing for uh, Dale Wood. It is. Again, and, uh, probably about three years overdue as well. Well, I was, I was um, going to say, it's going to be a bit disappointing because generally uh, when I'm watching the supercars and my wife's uh, fluttering about the kitchen doing whatever she's doing and then the commentators go, oh, is someone off down at turn, whatever. She'll say, who's that? And I'll say, Darwood. And it's Darwood every time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, it's see, it's my, always Darwood. Good... Someone's into the tyres. It's Darwood. My, my good time fun for, fact for that one was um, it, I used to like it when Dale, uh, David Wall was in the category for that very reason yep. because you know whenever he was wall. in the wall it's wall. david wall's in the wall yeah, yeah that's it well now it's david wood but, in the wall in the woodwork um he 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 did not he did not have a strong year i i don't nah. 
Oh, look, it's a fantastic race at Bathurst yes, uh, between yeah. him, and, uh, him and Pitha. Absolutely. Um, Erebus were very strong this year, um, but he he has his moments where he sticks his head up and everyone's like, oh, well, well this guy exists still. Uh, but for the rest of the year, he's just another grid filler, and really I don't think that um, it's going to be that much of a loss. No, I, I don't um, think Erebus are going to miss uh, all the repair bills, so that, that'll be one good no. thing for them. And we haven't got no, a confirmation for them either, have we? No, we do. We've got oh, Anton... We Anton Di Pasquale, Di Pasquale. Uh, oh, yes. he will be, he he'll be good. He'll be he'll be a good rev up for Reynolds, I reckon. Um, so, so yeah, I push agree. it push him yep. a bit harder. Yep. Well, hopefully they build another car too because Reynolds oh, car is, is, is different and it's a better car. But at the same time too, I think Reynolds is one of those standout drivers. Yeah, I think because Reynolds got a new car at the start of this year, I would say yep. they'll probably build a build a car before next year. The new car will go to Reynolds and uh, Di Pasquale will get Reynolds car from last year. Yeah. yeah, which is not a bad, which is not a bad no. car to be honest. No. That's probably not the worst. No, thing look, I, I think Dale Wood, Dale Wood's still running one of the old 2014, 15 WR cars. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yep. So he probably didn't that have the best something. machinery anyway. But I'm not entirely no. sure that that was the reason why he kept putting it into the wall. But anyway, it could have been. No. Maybe there's something wrong with the car. Um, who knows? Now we also saw the last race for Jason Bright. Probably oh, someone else God. who who could have pulled the pin. A couple five of years, years ago. Yeah, look, he's um, he's not been good this year at all. Um, no, he was a little bit emotional too, the big fella. He was. Yeah, he was. Obviously, he lives and 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 you know he does live the sport. He's got a lot of fans oh, out yeah, there sure. from yesteryear. Um, but it's probably uh, probably a bit overdue. He probably, probably one of the one of the only blokes that has uh, raced for both the factory Ford and Holden team, though. That's true. That is true. So, uh, yes. Yank, oh, except, except Big CL, he, he's done it three times well, around. I, I, I did say one of the only <laughs> w- one of. Yeah. Um, but you know, like, I don't know. I think for me, looking back, like I, I sort of had a bit of a, a look back in my mental history of Jason Bright over the last few years. Probably the only thing that I got a bit emotional about when it or cared at all. You know, I was a bit emotional when I saw Jason Bright win the first J- um, Jason Richards trophy in Pukekohe that first year oh, after that was, Jason died. That's that right. Was, that was one of those things that were just, it was poetic. It, it yeah. had to happen and they, they did happen, it and, and did. it was out of pure pace and everything. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I, I was a fan of Jason Bright through his last few years, but he, the last couple, yeah, he's just one of those people that, like, the pace isn't quite there and stuff like that. And. Yeah. You like it, it's obviously hard being the racer, but you like people to make those sorts of calls just a little bit before. Like Greg yeah. Murphy, he should have probably pulled the pin, and then he came back as co-driver and didn't really do anything, which is unfortunate. But it happens to the best of them, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. But, and look, uh, obviously yeah. Jason Bright's been a very successful guy, and that's why he does have a lot of fans out there. But um, as you say, unfortunately, he probably didn't go out quite as gracefully as he could have done. Um, he's probably been in the game just a bit too long. And his results yeah. have shown that. Uh, he's, he's I just, just did like his right burnout. Off. When he spat the girl, it was a quali. And then he just lit the tyres up on the last corner. <laughs> Actually, I yeah. saw um, it was it was Chad Nalon that tweeted that he had made a promise to, to... He must have done a talk at one of the local high schools. He'd made a promise that he was going to do a burnout down at that turn at some stage on the Sunday. So oh. Chad Nalon actually said he, he came through with the goods. Like, he did it. Now, obviously, we didn't see the full thing. It did just look like he went in a bit hot. But, you know, he also had a bit of fun doing the burnout. So there's a chance that um, that he really did actually come through come through with the goods it's, there. It's the only way you've got to get away with it. If he pulled up and normally just looked like, oh, yep, and then did a burnout, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. There you go. Well, I've, got, I've got the tweet here in front of me. He said, um, Jason Bright promised the school kids on Friday that he would do a Sunday burnout at the hairpin, and he actually did. Hashtag yeah. legend. So there you go. If he if he did, obviously he did make that promise. I'm certainly not questioning Chad's uh, honesty there. <laughs> but, um, yeah. yeah, he did it, and, and good on him. And that's what, he does have fans and whatnot, but it's just one of those things. He probably could have gone already. He's gone now, so that's okay. We'll just look back fondly at the, the things he did well in his career. Yeah. yeah. That's right. A couple of drivers also um, leaving that weren't retiring, however, um, which probably James Moffat. We'll start start yep. with James Moffat. He, to be fair, hasn't done much for for Gary no, Rogers no. Motorsport. He 
I think there was sort of that excuse for... there that the Volvo was hard to drive. Scotty Mack knew what he was doing. Moffat, you know, came into a car that the previous teammates had been rubbish. So they're like, maybe the car's just hard to drive. And Scott's got a handle on it, but other people are struggling. But they've yeah. gone to the Holden, and he's he, he hasn't done anything. Like, he's just been another also ran. Yeah. Hey, what he has done is been somebody that's ended up in the wall a lot. Yep. He has had a few incidents. All the time, having a crash. For and me, it's... the last time that James Moffat did anything good was in 2010 at Gold Coast when he was racing in the gold DJR Team Penske car <laughs> coming through that. the field. Yeah. yeah, that is literally the last time I remember James Moffat doing something that I was like, hell yeah, you go, son. Yeah. Yeah. He, um, yeah, so, it's, it's just one of those things he was making out numbers. And Gary Rogers, like, they've got Garth Tander on board, very, very solid driver, of course. Um, we won't touch too much on, on, on Garth, but I think they'd be looking for the next young gun as well. Someone that Garth can teach, someone that they can well, use Garth's they've signed, knowledge. They've and, signed Bieber. They've signed Bieber, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I think that's what they'd be wanting in a second driver to go with Garth. That's the perfect combination. You've got the old experience to help with set up and all the rest, and then you need your young gun who's going to go and throw everything at it and get some results. And, and James Moffat was just unfortunately not that guy. Mm. No. Yeah, well that's it. Um, and then there's also the massive potential that Will Davison won't even be on the grid next year either. Yeah, well that's no, the last but... one, not confirmed it, it... yet. But... I thought it was he- heavily linked to that other team, which is called something Twenty Three or something. Which, which is meant, red. Yep. Yeah, which is meant to be the Lucas Dumbrell team. Yeah, I was going to say that's what Lucas Dumbrell um, racing became. That, that's that's going to be a good little thing next year, I think, because they're running Cam Waters' car this year. So that that um, Cam Waters' car from this year will be that car next year. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Phil Mundy is retired from his own business, uh, and he's focusing on the race team uh, obviously you got Lucas Dumbrell there as well but also Cam McConville uh, so there's a good little head there so if um, Davo found himself there I don't think it'd be the worst team he could be at no I think it's going to be much like the the early days techno relationship but I think also once Giz left techno and Davo stepped in I don't think there was a lot of the same help from no. Triple Eight which is also, like, in a way, I feel quite sorry for Davo because he's a good driver, and he went from being in the, uh, what was at the time, the um, FPR cars, then had whatever disagreement he had there, then went to Erebus in the Mercedes, which was a car that had its own sort of issues or, or whatever and wasn't quite quick enough, but step had that time there and then took on the techno thing, which... Early days looked like it was going to be a really good relationship and potential for strong results, everything else. Well, especially after Gizzy got out of it fighting for the championship. That's how I was well, going to have to right. say when Gizzy got out, you'd have to say that was one of the leading non-factory teams. Like that's, yeah, that's where sure. you wanted to be. If you couldn't be in, in Triple Eight or, um, you know, or Penske, I suppose, um, that, that's a good spot to land on your feet. I suppose it was probably more the um, FPR. Than, than PR at the time, time. yeah, PRA. Um, yeah. But, yeah, PRA. But, yeah, that looked like that was a team you'd want to be in. And Davo just hasn't done much. I don't know. I don't know if I feel sorry for Davo or not. He never seems to walk out of any team with them all giving him a hug, saying, I'm sorry to see you leave, Will. Yeah. Which is what I've noticed. <laughs> just an observation, yeah. not making a big deal out of it. Just saying. That's what I've noticed about, uh, about Davo. But, anyway, he has not had a particularly great year this year. Um, no, hasn't done a great deal in that car. Hasn't looked all that good. He's had a few little flashes, but um, nothing that would that would get Techno to um, really. But they haven't really looked on. pacey at all. There's probably a couple of rounds where they've had a little bit of pace, but he's still very under the radar. Uh, yet last year he had a few drives. Um, obviously Bathurst was one winning Bathurst. So, but well, obviously yeah, at not, the same not time, a bad that, day, but um, yeah. th- that was still probably gifted with the front three cars disappearing. Yeah. Yeah, um, but you you yeah. you don't take it away from people like no, oh, of course no bad first no, no, win no. is 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 a gift. But um, yeah. even even still, yeah, it, it's he's sort of just been getting by. And to be honest, if he didn't end up in a car next year, I wouldn't be all that sad. It's like, yep, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but you know, if he's going to end up a team like that, there is a potential of something happening. Um, he 
could be an upper upper sort of finisher. I'm not going to say it would be a top five, top ten sort of finisher, but no. there's the potential the potential there for that sort of eight yeah. to fifteen. Well, it's, it's one of those things too. It doesn't matter how good the car is if the team around you, yep. you all don't quite like. Look at Lowndes, his last couple of years. If the team around you doesn't quite gel enough, um, you're not going to quite be there. Like when he was teamed with uh, Wink Up, they were both fighting for the championship pretty much mm. every single year. Yet now that Lance has taken a step away from, or not away, but like they're their own little team, they're not as good. He has had engineer changes, blah, blah, yeah, blah, I was blah, gonna say, blah, I think, blah. I think losing Ludo was probably the biggest thing that's happened this year. And he obviously had a very inexperienced, um, or fairly inexperienced bloke step into that role, uh, who's new to the team. And I don't know, I can't help but wonder, because it's such a sudden downfall for Lowndes. Like he's gone from just having solid seasons every year, you know, Lowndes going to be fine, to all of a sudden... Really, it was a bit nowhere for a lot of the year. Well, even last, but last year was the same. Even when he had Ludo, he yeah. had a, he like had a win. He had a couple of little genius um, calls throughout the race, but as a a solid platform. But then at the same time, it was a brand new team. You can say it's Triple Eight, but it was a brand new team. Yeah, it sort of operated alongside Triple Eight, isn't it? Yeah, which I think. By the sounds of it, Davo's relationship, it, that's if he gets the drive, um, is going to be sort of between that and probably where Techno were. It sounds like they're going to have a lot of help yeah. from well, That's PRA. certainly not a bad spot. If Davo can land that drive, then that's probably not a bad result for him. Um, and, you know, give him another two years to not do much and then they won't pat him on the back when he leaves either. But anyway, um, not going to focus on <laughs> Will, <laughs> Will Davison and yeah, my personal So Blanchard is out too, I think. Yeah, yeah, I believe uh, he is. And, of course, we didn't mention um, the young fella up the back there. Um, his name escapes me right now. Uh, that That's also leaving next year. Uh, Rulo. Confirmed. Yeah, Rulo. Sorry, I had a, I had a brain fart. Um, yeah, Alex Rulo also, also gone. But that's... That's probably fine. He's very, very young. He could probably do with some experience away from the main game. I'm sure if... Well, he's he's gone and um, he's tested in the British Touring Cars. Yeah, and look, power to him. He's obviously a talented young bloke, um, and and I don't think at his age, lapping around at the back of the main field is going to do his career progress all that much good. So why not? Go try something else. You never know. He might be back one day and he might be uh, winning championships. So uh, it is what it is. All the best to him. Um, but... Look, any other uh, any other news that you guys have heard um, that you'd? Uh... No, it's pretty much. That's pretty much. Yeah, it. no. Yeah, it's always good no, to... I, think, I think that's about it. I think we've covered most of the drivers that have been in and out. Um, obviously, well, obviously, Walkinshaw. Um, be interesting to see their progress next year with their um, their, their new partners. Yeah, well, that's going to be I can't, interesting. I can't see him coming out and just being like, here we are. Like, It's going to be much like the Penske story. It's going to take him a year or two. It will. Um, yeah. Yeah. It, it but, still will. yeah, Penske was, what, three years? This, this three is the third years, year yep. in the sport. Yeah, yep. so they've come come a long way from Marcus Ambrose. Yep, yep. So uh-huh. gone are the days of who cares about that bloke from that island somewhere down in lower Australia. Yeah, somewhere um, down south there where the dragons roam. Yeah, yep. you know, it's... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can see you can see how much I care about that bloke and what he has brought to the, the category since he's returned. Yeah. Um, now, looking back at 2017, what do we think of the year? The season, obviously, we've talked about the uh, the way it finished, finished in an amazing way. Um, looking forward to 2018 to see what's going to come up. But overall, I think uh, I think it was another another good year for the. Uh, the Australian supercars, it seems to be growing in profile internationally, which I think is always good. It's becoming one of the more well-known sports around the world, I suppose. Uh, it's probably getting right up there, which I think is good. And I don't know, I still, th- I still think the um, the sport's growing. And uh, I don't know, it was a good year. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call 2017 a good year for the supercars. Yeah, Definitely. look, I think it was a good year. Uh, it be interesting to see how all the manufacturers play out over the next coming years and chassis and everything else. But at the moment, it's, it's still kicking on strong. Um, yeah, manufacturers have pulled out, but the teams are still keen as mustard. So there's certainly still a lot going on. And yeah, I, I think it's still moving forward quite well. 
Thanks to everybody who has joined us for this episode. We hope you have enjoyed and please feel free to check out all of our other podcasts on YouTube or by visiting our website at www.flagtoflag.ml. And last but not least, thanks for joining me, Ryan and Willie. No worries. Pleasure as always. Well, we look forward to talking to you all next time. Bye for now.